Hello, my name is John Cusick, and I wrote this book, Dimension Y, How to Save the Universe Without Really Trying. The story follows Lola, a girl from the 21st century who's thrown a thousand years into the future and must find her way home. In this chapter, Lola is aboard an interstellar cruise ship called the SS Sunstar. She snuck down to the engine room to meet the ship's crew of bog mutants, when suddenly the Sunstar is struck by an asteroid and hurtled off course in the direction of a star. On board the SS Sunstar, the sirens were deafening. So deafening it was hard to hear all the screaming. And all the screaming and all the sirens made it almost impossible to hear the great cruiser rending and buckling under the massive G-force, which the ship's anti-grav computer was working madly to combat. The ship twisted and flipped until at last the anti-grav computer got a grip on which side was supposed to be down. Passengers, deck chairs, teacups, and complimentary bottles of shampoo, all of which had been tumbling through the air, fell at once to the floor. For now, at least, to everyone on board, it felt as if the sun star was right side up. In fact, it was still tumbling willy-nilly into a star. Lola moaned. She was covered in dark matter dust, as well as regular dust, and a few chunks of piping and ductwork that had come loose from the machinery around her. She coughed and worked herself into a sitting position. Gabby lay a few feet away, unconscious but breathing. The bog mutants were scattered like debris from an exploded jelly donut. One by one, they picked themselves up, brushed themselves off, and separated themselves from one another. I think you've got my nose, Jeremy. Hey, looks like I do. Can I keep it? Sure. I always liked your nose better anyway. What happened? said Lola. She hacked. Are we sinking or whatever the space equivalent is? <coughs> attention passengers, attention passengers, came a voice over the loudspeakers. Lola quivered. Voices on loudspeakers were almost never a good thing in her experience. This is your captain speaking. Well, I've got some news. First, tonight's screening of Starship Titanic has been cancelled. Aww, said one of the bog mutants, who'd been looking forward to it. I know there was a lot of argument about whether showing a film about a horrible interstellar cruise ship catastrophe while on an interstellar cruise ship was appropriate. And I know the detractors are still a bit sore, but I'm here to tell you the whole thing has become moot. Oh, for Pete's sake, Lola said, getting to her feet. The second bit of news, which I'll get to in a moment, has really thrown the whole should we show a movie about a starship crashing, crashing while on a starship debate into relief, let me tell you. The irony is, well, it's just pretty astounding. There was a mumbling sound off mic. Quite right, Ensign. Ensign Sanders informs me correctly that this isn't an example of irony per se, but rather mere coincidence. And I'm sure we'll all take great comfort in that knowledge. Thank you, Ensign Sanders. Lola took it upon herself to see if the hatch out of the engine room was jammed shut. It was. So to the second bit of news, the captain continued, well, it seems we've struck something, and no, it wasn't an iceberg, smarty pants. That would be absurd. The captain cleared his throat. A sound meant to be small and unassuming, which was loud and bone-rattling when transmitted through the loudspeakers. <clears throat> what we've struck is an asteroid, which, yes, some might compare to an iceberg in space, though this one, it seems, isn't made of ice the way some asteroids are. A fact many of you will recall from Tuesday's after-dinner science lecture, Space Junk and You. Anyway, come on, Lola said, gesturing to the bog mutants. You've got to help me get this door open. The mutants looked at one another. They glanced at the piles of dark matter briquettes that needed to be cleaned up. They glanced at the engines, which weren't going to stoke themselves. They glanced at the floor, sheepishly, and had no idea what to do. I'm ordering you, Lola tried, feeling a bit bad about bossing them around, but deciding she could live with it under the circumstances, to help me get this hatch open. The asteroid, the captain continued, has destroyed our propulsion system, and we're unable to control the ship, which wouldn't be such a big deal if we weren't on a direct collision course with a red dwarf, which will consume the ship in a fiery cataclysm in... Ensign? There was a pause. Ensign says we've got about 20 minutes, so what you should do, the captain continued, is go ahead and get to your emergency teleport rafts immediately. Please proceed in an orderly fashion, but, you know, don't worry all that much about being orderly. 
the priority here is getting off the ship before it falls into a star, is what I'm saying. Lola had an idea. Hey, bog mutants, she called. Congratulations. You've all been promoted. You've all been promoted to official, um, door openers. Expressions of pure wonder and delight consumed their faces. Never in all their people's history had anyone ever been promoted. Hooray! They cheered. They high-fived each other splashily. Can we have a party? asked one. Yes, said Lola, and there will be cake and streamers and hot chocolate, but first you've got to help me get this door open. Stand aside, miss, said the nearest bog mutant. That's our job. Let's see, boomed the captain. Is there anything else I'm missing? Well, no, I suppose that's all. It's been an honor to be your captain. Shame about the ship, but then I'm sure she's insured up the wazoo, so really I'm not too broken up about her falling into a star. Okay, thanks everyone. You've been great. This message will now repeat. Thank you very much.